that could be a lot. Well, yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see about Saloon, but nonetheless, uh, this is the opening round of the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament, and we are underway. And it looks like we are even and good to go here. So let's see now what the three treasures are in fact going to be. So we're starting off with the Fairy Water, as well as the Herb. And the obligatory magic key to get them out of town here. So nothing really fabulous to start off with here, but it looks like they're at nine strength, which is more than enough to beat slimes and probably a drakey. So they should be able to get out of level one pretty quickly. Well, a scorpion on Janice's side and trying to get away and Oh, finding out that there is the standard Dragon Breath, and that is going to send Janice back fairly quickly here. Yeah, that will happen. And now the Seawolf getting the bad news about the Scorpion as well. And wow, with these quick attacks and deaths, it uh, almost feels like a, the start of a Chaos Seed. No kidding. Uh, one thing that people can do if there's a, a start like this and you're getting killed a lot is you can save as we see a town just west of start. Um, you can save and then if you die you can just quickly reset and not have to go through all the death animation music. Well, we see that that town off to the west is Rimmeldar. So uh, once some money is acquired that will be an easy access to the magic keys to be able to open up a whole host of possibilities meanwhile the sea wolf has found a cave on the east side and i'm trying to figure it out it's either it looks like the tablet cave and he's got some balls and is navigating it in the dark because if you get lost <laughs> You're in trouble. Oh, uh, yeah. Navigating any of the caves in the dark are certainly a challenge, but with the Tablet Cave, you have no enemy encounters. So if you tend to get lost, you're kind of bonking around to try to get to your way back. So the Sea Wolf is pretty close to the edge here, and he gets to search a treasure box that has a torch in it once he takes it. Meanwhile, Janice came very close to killing a ghost there. Uh, perhaps if he had used his herb that he got at the start, he might have been able to do it, but he might just be saving that for later. Uh, and we see another round with the ghost, and Janice says no thank you to round two on that fight. But then runs into a scorpion that ambushes and breathes fire all over Janice. And now another cave off to the north here for the Sea Wolf, and it is the Staff of Rain Cave. So our runners will be looking for a Silver Harp to trade into that old man, and will receive the Staff of Rain, one of the three items needed to acquire the Rainbow Drop to get to Sherlock Castle. All right, there we go, Janice. Finally running into one of those Drakeys, which he handily takes down. It's just one experience away from the next level, which he should get right now. Ooh, meanwhile, the Seawolf getting slept and wrecked by a droll. So, minimal statistics there. One, four, seven, and nine on the level gain for Janus, and now finds a Drakema and opts to get the heck away from it. Yeah, so right about now, um, he could probably take down a ghost, honestly, even with those little stat gains, just getting a little bit of extra health. Really, these first couple levels, if you can get them out of the way quickly, it's recommended to do that as opposed to just heading out and exploring elsewhere where you just may die quite a bit. So 
certainly is a challenge here. As it looks like a Star Wyvern is going to give us, uh, yep, going to give Seawolf a little more than some trouble, and back he goes. And now the wolf sending Janus back. Yeah, so it seems like Janus is exploring this plains area just to the west because that's where he saw the blue slime and the drakey and he may feel that that's his best chance of actually killing anything. But what happens is there's also some of that nasty stuff like the wolves and the drakimas, so it's kind of a coin flip to whether you can actually kill something. And the Seawolf taking out a ghost and is going to hop on up to level 2. A little less than 2 minutes behind Janus in terms of levels. And we'll see if the remaining strength of the Seawolf will be enough. And it is to take out the ghost. That gives him another 4 experience. Our racer's looking to get to 17 experience total to get to level 3. So early on, it's going to be a matter of a little bit of grinding just to be able to get enough A, power to be able to take on some of these tougher enemies, and B, perhaps get a little bit of uh, money in there to either get a key to look for some items, or possibly to get some weapons and armor. So there's a few different options depending on which way they want to go here. Yeah, really, just getting a key will do so much because you can get access to the chests in Tentagel. And if there's gold in there, you can buy more keys, you can upgrade your weapons, your armor, and that will just help monumentally. Well, we see Janice picking up the clothes, which... Well, it gives two defense, but that two defense could certainly make a difference here in the early going. Yeah, the benefit of something like that is you may be able to fight more ghosts and drakies before they kill you. I'm not sure where they are in the damage-breaking spectrum of things, but it can only help. I'll try to take a look at my notes on that here. Well, with 12 defense for Janus, that'll certainly certainly be a huge help in terms of damage breaking some of those lower level enemies. As now up to level 3 goes the Seawolf. With still no spells. Yeah, it's kind of tough here. Still, you can't kill scorpions because they're just going to scorch you to death. I am curious about the magicians, though, whether those can be defeated, and that will give you a nice 8 experience. You pretty much just have to tough it out in this starting zone. Well, I think from what I saw, the issue with the magicians, uh, I, I, I have to double check because I know I've been going back and forth here, but I think one of them might also have that uh, that dragon breath that does give or take about 20 hit points of damage. Okay. That would do the trick. Yeah, if you can just suffer in that starting zone and get up to 53 gold, then you can get your key, but it's tough. And even then, if you get a key, I guess the question is, well, what is the best way to go with it? But I would imagine with the option of hitting those four treasure chests, that getting the treasury in Tantagel Castle uh, would be the way to go, as opposed to trying to see what's behind Tantagel Castle or... Well, you'd have to get two keys to see what's here in Rimmeldar. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's some clever way for me to get my cake and eat it too. But it seems like 
you just open the chests, hope there's some money. If there's money, you can upgrade your weapons, buy more keys, and then go back and do everything. So it's a little bit of a windy path, but seems like a good option at this point. Well, sometimes as you're going through and getting various things, as now Jan is picking up the torch that was in the tablet cave. Hey, I uh, mean, at least you can see your way out of there if you wanted to. Yeah, but then it almost seems like uh, all that effort for naught, in a sense. At least you want to be able to walk out of there with something as opposed to using that something to try to get out. Sure. Uh, I guess I guess if you got stuck... <laughs> then you might be able to use it. And we see that the Drakemas have stop spell and have no problem using it. Yeah, really those zone one enemies like wolves and Drakemas, we're not strong enough to be able to do any damage to them, so we're kind of confined at the moment. And even some of those lower enemies being a little troublesome, so it's kind of pick your proverbial poison here. And there's that fire from, oh wow, the fire from the magician. So magicians are kind of out of the realm. It almost seems like maybe the way to go is slow and steady with the Drakies. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea right about now. I mean, you can't stick around start too long. Like, you, you have to at least try and just look a little bit in each direction. And if it looks like it's going to be difficult, then you can just chill out at home. Well, the sea wolf finding out that the scorpions are continually being difficult with their propensity to use the baby breath, that baby dragon breath, and use it quite often. Yeah, it definitely looks like a 75% thing. So now back in a cave here is Janice as the sea wolf working on a ghost. Yeah, that does look like he's in Swamp North right now. And now to level four goes the Sea Wolf, and he gets the spells of Stop Spell and Outside. Stop Spell sounds great, but unfortunately it's not going to do anything on the Fire Breath from the, the Magician and the Scorpions. Although he did just take a Magician down, so that will help with the Gold Acquiring. Every little bit helps here in the early going. Oh, that is huge. Janice with the Hail Mary attack on a scorpion. Excellent move crits it to get to level four. And the seven power, nine response speed, six hit points, and a magic point, and the two spells... A little less than a minute behind when the Sea Wolf got to level four. Yeah, I think we're finally going to see some branching out here with the key related plan that I was discussing earlier. Uh, it looks like uh, Janice now heading northward and going to bypass that cave, but runs into a Wolf Lord and runs away from it. Yeah, with that last level, they actually gained a decent amount of agility, so now they at least have a chance to run away from these mid-tier enemies. Ooh. Janice getting slept and wrecked from a stone man. Yeah, it's actually... Uh, you may think Stone Man is an endgame enemy and they're, you're not going to be able to run away from it, but those guys actually only have 40 agility. So Janice actually had, a, I think, about a 35% chance of running away there, but didn't get the lucky roll. And the Scorpion Fire taking out Janice and the Magician. 
Well, toying with the Seawolf here, another attack, and it's enough for, to take him out. So now just 15 experience away from level 5, and the Seawolf using the Herb. Interesting to know that he does have enough money to buy a key at this point in time, but he may be saving up to try and get two of them. Yeah, with so many options as far as what to do with gold and, well, so little gold to go around, it's almost, in a sense, art imitating life. Who would have thought that keys would be the key to unlocking this seed? Who'd have thunk it indeed? So now, well, casting a stop spell on the magician... I guess to avoid it using heal. And now the Seawolf able to take out the Magician. That's going to be enough to get him to level 5. With one power, again. Uh, 25 hit point gain. And we've got the Spell of Radiant. And the Seawolf going in, presumably, to save. Yeah, that, that HP is actually pretty nice, because now you can even survive a couple of those fire breaths from the big bad magician scorpion gang. But good, he's on his way to get keys, and we'll see what we get. So heading on over to that. Meanwhile, Janice is working on the Magician, and oh, another fire attack, and Janice goes down once again. But he's still making good progress. He is well on his way to level 5. He's only 9 or 10 experience short. I think 9. I always get the numbers messed up. Yep, he is 9, now 6 away from level 5. And as the Seawolf was doing that little bit of exploration, that allowed Janus to catch up at least a little bit in terms of experience. But the Seawolf is about to enter the treasury, and we're going to see what we have this time around. We've got some big bucks. And some more big bucks. And a very, very a big, big stick. stick. <laughs> And the anticlimactic wings, but yes, Erdrick's sword, the strongest sword in the game, that's going to automatically add 40 attack power to their total, along with their base strength. So, the Seawolf now is going to start to beat up on some different enemies here. Yeah, and look at how quick things change. He just takes out a wolf in two hits and increases his experience by about 50%. And just that quickly is just a few mere experience away from getting to level 6. And is now with all that gold going to stay at the end. And that gives, uh, yeah, with that extra gold, that gives Seawolf a chance to buy some armor, and uh, that's, well, not a whole lot of options. Either the clothes or the chain mail, and no shields in which to purchase. Well, you said the treasury was going to be a uh, potential factor, and it most certainly was here, as it gave the Seawolf the early advantage of finding Erdrick's sword as well as a bunch of money. and is now stocking up on keys with that money. By chance, do you know how many treasure chests there are in the game? That is an excellent question. I'm trying to count them up as I go along here. I see uh, 23 on the outside, so 30 if you include the ones in Sherlock. Okay, so that's probably about a 1 in 8 chance of that the sword actually being in the treasury, so 
not often, but more than you'd think. Well, it it's good to see early, but on the same token, for fans like myself who love to play the pyramid game in Sherlock and see which of those six treasure chests it is at the bottom, well, we won't get to play that this time around. But there are plenty more opportunities to as the numerous races go along here. Oh, so the number I'm seeing in chat right now is 23 chests, so it's even better than 1 in 8. It's about 1 in 6. Eight. No, you're right. Curse you up to NG. He just, he just broke it down a little bit more differently than I did. I included the three in the throne room and... Yeah, so there's 20 throughout the uh, throughout the overworld that's not in the throne room, and then the additional seven in Sherlock. And now we see here that Janice is in the treasury, and he's going to find the big stick. About three minutes after the Sea Wolf did. Yeah, I'm taking particular amusement of the fact that. Janice is wearing the clothes, but has this legendary sword. It's really a truly rags-to-riches story. So now we see that the basement of Tangential Castle... Well, it leads to a cave, and it looks like the Sea Wolf is taking some notes on it here, and that is Garen's grave. Alright. Let's see what we got. Really what would be interesting is there's an option for a very quick gold grind here. So I'm not sure what there was for high-end items in Remolder, but they may have the option to get quite powered up. And actually, right there, we he did not pick up two death necklaces. He's actually exceeded the memory listing for treasure chests, and which allows you to pick up certain treasure chests indefinitely. And sometimes it displays weird item names, both real and fake things. Meanwhile, in Rimmeldar, we have a torch behind the two locked doors. And yeah, that was a fairy water that was picked up, even though it had displayed... Ooh, as the golem taking out the sea wolf there. Uh, but it displayed... The... Uh, yeah, displayed the death necklace, but was actually a fairy water. And the reason behind that is, uh, as Mr. Holmes was explaining, that chests respawn every time you go to that overworld map. But due to the programming limits at the time the game was made... The game tracks up to eight treasure chests as opened. So each one open beyond that eighth chest can be taken over and over again. And as you saw there, it's uh, well, there are a number of different ways to do it. In this case, it was a matter of uh, being in the throne room, which those three are automatically marked as open. So that way you don't keep reopening the chests in the treasure room. And then opening a few chests in the treasury. In this case, because the Grave of Garam was connected as the Sea Wolf now gets to level six. Let's see what we've got here. One, two, four, four, and a spell. And it's heal more. What a way to make up for those uh, not so great stats. Yeah, so this should really open things up because heal more really only is good when you have a lot of health, which they so happen to have. So this greatly expands the group of enemies that they'll be able to fight. It most certainly does. Uh, so what they'll utilize as far as that gold grind is because uh, they'll be able to get to that potential ninth chest, they can keep opening that gold chest over and over again in a matter of seconds, keep accruing anywhere between 500 and 750 gold at a time. But as far as armor and shields to be able to do so, not a whole lot of them. Uh, the most the most expensive thing that we saw that uh, wasn't weapons, which they don't need now because they have the best weapon in the game, that would be, well, the chainmail, which they already have. So now they've got the opposite problem. They've got they've got access to money, but now nothing really to spend it on. 
Right, so now a pretty good idea would be to branch out on this east path where the enemies aren't too brutal. I know if they go north, there are star wyverns and stone men that can cause some issues. Uh, so you can kill these mid-tier enemies like the wolves, the drachimas. And it's just really important, when, if you can get a level quickly, it's usually a good idea to do it, especially when you don't have hurt more yet. So now Janus is in the grave and is going to see what is there as, oof, we found out that the Druin has Dragonlord Breath. Uh-oh. So, Janus just reset? Interesting. Okay. I think he lost some experience there. But I'm not positive. Maybe not. He's still at the same level. Oh, it looks like he may have saved because he really wants to do a gold grind or something. But not sure. Could be possible here. It looks like the Sea Wolf is in Swamp Cave North. Right, so I'm seeing some suggestions in chat that Swamp Cave is a good place to go, and I can't disagree with that. And now a Wyvern being taken out, and that's going to get Sea Wolf to level 7. So pulling away here in terms of the experience levels. And that gives him the spell of return at level 7. That spell of return will allow a runner to get back to Tandigil Castle uh, once they cast it on the overworld. Also, I think for, if you're in a town as well, just as long as you're not in a cave, I think. Yeah, as long as you're not in a cave or dungeon, then yes, that'll work. Otherwise, you'll have to cast outside. So Janice going deeper into Garen's grave. I think just taking a quick peek at his map. Oh, and the sea wolf emerges at the bottom of the swamp cave, and it leads to the back of Garenham. and three chests. So we've got an herb. We've got the fighter's ring. That's going to add two attack power to the total. Yeah, don't put on the death necklace now there, Seawolf. And a magic key. Meanwhile, we have Janice actually managing to run away from a red dragon and picking up the fourth chest in the grave, which is a dragon scale. Uh, the Sea Wolf looking to s separate from a little bit of inventory, selling a couple of the wings. And now getting these. Dragon scale is the sea wall. All right, yeah. So Janice has opened enough chests to be able to do this gold grind, but I'm curious if he's found a place to spend that money. I don't think there's much. We've seen Garenham now, and that has a half plate armor and a small shield. Ooh, living rich. And Garenham is right outside of Charlock Castle. Interesting. Oh, all sorts of stuff here. So we've got the uh, the Rainbow Drop Cave, also known as the Jerk Cave. So the Sea Wolf uh, getting kicked out, probably for some uh, swag, I suppose. He got jerked. And we have the Mountain yeah. Cave, so that's going to be access to five more treasure chests. I was going to say something like 
those two caves so close together are almost like spark over caves, but I don't think the analogy applies. At least not when they're that far away. No, although I wonder if there's been a seed where you have, as uh, in referencing the spark over bridge, where it's a bridge over to one tile of land, I wonder if there's ever been a spark over bridge to a cave. That would be pretty legendary. I think the most unlikely thing I've ever seen in a seed was one where the searchable overworld item was actually on top of a town. And you had to physically go into the town and then re-exit so you'd be standing on the tile to search it. And uh, we've got one of the key items, the Stones of Sunlight, atop the mountain cave. And level... Sorry, bud, I think you're just cutting out a little bit. Uh, very possible. Uh, things happening around here, I had to kind of cut myself off a little quickly there, as, oof, Jan is quickly resetting after the Armored Knight taking him out, and now the Seawolf getting up to level 8. Oh, wow, that's some good stat gains there. 11 power, 10 agility. So... Janus, again, he did his gold grind, and he's really making a risk play, a risk reward play, where he's trying to find a town to use it. And when he doesn't find it, he's resetting. So that can, if that happens a lot, that can not help, so to say. And meanwhile, in the mountain cave, along with the Stones of Sunlight, we also have the Silver Harp. So the Sea Wolf will be able to go back and trade that harp in for the Staff of Rain. So that is two out of the three essential items needed. Okay, so interesting. Uh, Janus is in the Swamp Cave. If he can make it through, he'll get to Garenham where he'll probably be pretty happy, but he still can't spend a lot of the money that he's banked up here. So that is all of the chests, as an herb was in the far part of it, and the Sea Wolf, I guess, was debating on maybe death warping for a gold grime, but thought better of it, perhaps because he hasn't seen anything to buy. And... Ooh... Well, who may death warp him back after the fact, and he does. Yeah, get your fun police emotes out, if some exist. I'm sure someone has some. Yes, the Red Dragon, uh, among the toughest non-Dragon Lord enemies in the game, uh, they are affectionately known as the Fun Police, because when they show up, the fun tends to stop. Yes, I, I believe if, well, if it was my stream, there would be some police siren techno music going on. That alone is, among, is one of among many reasons to give Mr. Holmes a follow, if you haven't already. So the half plate and small shield being purchased by Janus. Meanwhile, the Sea Wolf is heading back to the Staff of Rain Cave and is going to trade in the Silver Harp and pick up the chest that has the Staff of Rain in it. So now all the Sea Wolf needs to be able to acquire the Rainbow Drop is Erdrick's Token, which can be in, well, a number of different places. I don't believe we saw... Did we get... Uh, did Janice get all the way down to the bottom of Garen's grave? I had to refresh my screen as he was in there. I don't believe so. Okay, I think that was where 
some enemy had taken him out before he had gotten there. So there's a possibility that it could be in that chest, it could be in the Vanilla Stones of Sunlight cave, or it can be one of the three searchable spots. Right, and I don't think we've actually seen any of them so far. And, and as Smashy very um, appropriately points out, we have not seen any cursed belts or spark over corsets. Spark over really is ubiquitous in the community, isn't she? <laughs> uh, she does have uh, she does have a lot of. Uh different involvements to say the least here is janice now going after well this is rather brazen going after a werewolf here i mean if you have heal more you can you can make it work with twenty thousand and change on the line he oof, has to use up his last heal more I think he can do it. Roughly one more attack to go, and he does. Meanwhile, the Wraith Knight using the Dragonlord Breath on the Seawolf, so he's going back to the castle. Wow. With that werewolf kill, Janus goes from 100... All of a sudden, Janice is knocking on the door for level 7. Yeah, 337 experience, the target number to get to level 7, so... That means that Janice is about 77 experience away. And really, at this point, if he were to die, you pretty much have to just take that death, because that pretty much 100 experience you get from the werewolf is just too valuable. You can always manufacture a gold grind again if you need to. But so far, I mean, the number of towns that may have some sort of armory to be able to utilize said gold grind, they are hiding very well, as we're still looking for the towns of Cole, as well as the town of Cantlin, and yes, even Breconary. No one cares about Breconary. Apparently I'm changing my name from Ferran Burgundy to no one. Are you the town of Breconary? No, I'm just one of the few who cares about it. Okay, I mean, someone has to. Well, nobody else shows it love, so I have to. It, like me, is one of the, the proverbial misfit, in this case, towns, as opposed to toys. So now, meanwhile, Jan is finding a toy that he likes in the Stones of Sunlight. Now in the Mountain Cave. And Lavkian, yes, the uh, the name capital J uh, is a strength and hit point build. So they won't quite get the, the the agility and magic points boosts. As now the Sea Wolf back through the swamp cave and is in Garenham. As Janice takes out a Wolf Lord and is now going to get up to level seven. So after a bit of a slow start, the seed's starting to move along pretty nicely here. As the majority of the the items needed to find and access Sherlock Castle, as you can see it there at the top of Seawolf's screen. Well, there's a couple of things missing, but they've got quite a bit of them, and very few treasure chests left to search, so... At this point, it looks like it's a matter of finding the towns of Cole, Hawk's Nest, and Cantlin to try to see where those overworld items are, or 
In the case of the Erdrix token, it can be in a chest, so is it possible that it's in one of those two chests that have not been searched yet? Meanwhile, we have the Seawolf reaching level 9 on the exact experience number, and I believe he got a crap load of MP with that. I got a very good amount of hit points as well as magic points on that. 29 hit points and 10 MP on that level 9 gain. Uh, I, got mix I got mixed up. If I had a dollar for every time I did that, I could probably retire by now. So no worries there, Mr. Holmes. Invest the dividends. Always invest the dividends. Well, here we have these Stones of Sunlight Cave, and it's got gold. So that means that the Erdrix token can only be in one of four different locations. It's either in the very bottom of Garen's grave, it is in the overworld in the yet-to-be-determined coordinates, it could be in the spike tile in Hawk's Nest, or it could be in the search tile four steps south of the Bats in the town of Cole. Out of curiosity, has anybody checked the Swamp Cave spike tile enemy? Uh, they have not. They have just been... They, they have just visited and passed on through. Okay, because with their plethora of HP now, they could take that enemy down and... Like, if it's something really wet noodle-ish, like something with stop spell, they could farm experience there for a little bit. It's just good to know at some point. Just take a peek in there at least once. Well, Janice, uh, using the Silver Harp, which in the vanilla version of the game, it uh, generates one of five different enemies, and this time around, well, it brings up a Wraith, something not normally seen. So the Wraith does have heal, but note that uh, Janus does have stop spell if he needs it, but he doesn't. He just got a couple of unlucky rolls. Yeah, there was a dodge in there, and the... Well, that, that seems to be the grinding way to go. Now, I'm not sure if it's because Janus has had trouble finding more palatable enemies... It's a seldom seen strategy, and we'll see if it pays off here as he finds a knight. Meanwhile, the Seawolf has found the town of Hawksness. So we will see that little tree block there just outside of the box containing the Star Wyvern. That will have an automatically generated enemy, which... Oh, is the Golem. I'm curious. I think he can give this a shot. So if he's doing 24 damage... Okay, it looks like his range is about like 13 to 26. So he needs to get 8 hits in. That's going to be pushing it. Well, this definitely does not look like a grindable enemy. It's just a matter of beating it once and get getting whatever item may or may not be in there and getting out of dodge. Yeah, right now the problem is it's just going to eat up all your MP. But maybe in the future this can be farmed, because they do give a lot of experience. And he gets Erdrick's armor in its vanilla location. So the best armor in the game going to the Seawolf. So I think it's very poignant to criticize McGrew that the game is not random enough. I think that's the proper etiquette. Uh, I think, I think it's almost like uh, like phrasing an archer. You know, we just don't do that anymore. Okay, but sometime we're seriously going to have to talk about getting that back in the rotation. We we generally leave that up to the chat to throw that out there. As Janice now getting up to level eight, and the nice boosts that come along with it. Here is we're just before the forty-five minute mark of this race.
Yeah, so that Silver Harp strategy worked out pretty nice because one of the enemies was a knight, which is the proverbial wet noodle. He uses hurt a lot. And Modest gains at level 10, as that is where the Sea Wolf is. And to answer the question in chat, the half plate armor is uh, 16 defense added. So it's uh, so going from that to the Erdrix armor is going to be a 12 defensive point boost. Man, I do really wish Sparkover was here right now because playing the harp is probably one of her favorite things to do. Oh, and the seawall converging on a couple of towns here, and we've got Cantlin. It's the proverbial shopping mall of Alephgard, as there are three different towns. Alright. So we do have a silver shield here, so that's a potential gold grind target. You have three shops within the town here, one locked behind a door. And Seawolf going to opt to upgrade to a large shield. So that'll be a 6 defensive point boost from the 4 of the small shield to the 10 defensive points of the large shield. And now he's going to head on into the heavily defended and guarded area to see where there are coordinates. Ooh, 92 north and 63 west. Those are countable, right? Wink, wink. Well, for, for most, I would say probably not. For somebody who is as uh, cerebral of a player as yourself, or perhaps a Game Boy F9 or a NES Cardinality, I would not be shocked if I saw any of the three of you trying to count coordinates like that. Yeah, I, I was trying to kid a bit, but in all seriousness, occasionally... If it's an open space and it's not windy, I will count ridiculous ones, but Ness Cardinality could probably do it blindfolded, so who knows, right? Either that or you'd RNG manip it to like the starting castle. Because that's possible. Okay, I'm a really sarcastic person, so just note that I am not being serious right now. <laughs> Well, meanwhile, uh, albeit one step above, uh, the Sea Wolf is in the town of Cole and has found the Fairy Flute. Hmm, the Fairy Flute is in Cole. That seems to be something very similar to Vanilla. Well, you wouldn't expect it with Randomizer, so. Uh, what that also means is by process of elimination, because there is an overworld spot, those lengthy coordinates of 92 northwest will be home to one of the needed items, the Erdrix token, which also is in its vanilla location, and chat is already... Uh, they're already doing what they usually do when it comes to these things, and with McGrew being in ch chat... Uh, McGrew, I apologize. I, I apologize for the, uh, the riffraff that may be brought to you momentarily here. I just want to point out, like, you may think, okay, it's like a 1 in 6 chance for that to occur, because it's all... Uh, there's actually a 1 in 24 chance of this occurring. There's a 1 in 3 chance of... Uh, 1 in 6 chance of the items being randomized in the right spots. But there's also a 50% chance that the token could be in a chest, or a 50% chance the fairy flute could be in a chest, so... It's actually pretty unlikely that that happens. So, the odds were beaten. Yeah, so... I'm just taking a look at the experience right now because we've been having a lot of fun here. And Janice has just hit level 9. And although he only has half the experience as the Sea Wolf, really, that can be a very small deficit in the end game. 
really, that's only like two to three minutes of high level grinding. So if he can just keep pace, he's very well in this race. Well, Janice was thinking about it with the Green Dragon and is going to go for it. Meanwhile, just a little over 50 experience away is the Seawolf from level 11. And as the Seawolf goes back into Garenham, Janice is still going after this Green Dragon, but is running low on resources quickly. Oh, and he gets wrecked with a 28 hit point attack. Oh, that's, that's really rough. I think he got a dodge there, which is pretty unlucky. So now heading into the swamp here, and the sea wolf is back into Hawk's Nest. That's a pretty interesting choice. Maybe he's looking at trying to grind, but I don't think he can fight more than one golem at a time right now. Also, he's one experience away from the next level, so I'm really hoping he... Well, I don't want him to die, but I hope that he encounters a blue slime somehow, because that's just very satisfying. Just being so close and yet so far. It's also worth noting that Seawolf does have the Fairy Flute, so he can choose to use that if he wants, but it costs 8 seconds every time you use it, so there are very few situations where it can be useful. And we got a eh, marginal gain at level 11, so it was a 12, 0, 3, and 1. So the agility and MP continuing to be low. Only 40 MP at level 11. But that 12 strength is quite helpful. It most certainly is, and oof, the Seawolf trying to get away from a red dragon and not able to do so. As Jan is finding some more big bucks in the Vanilla Stones of Sunlight Cave. This has been uh, certainly an interesting race in a number of different ways so far as now the Seawolf heading into the Swamp Cave and oh we've got the Red Dragon as that Spike Tile Guardian. So pick your poison, the Golem or the Red Dragon. He gets an excellent move. Yeah, it's easy to beat things when you get excellent moves. This game is easy. Yeah, just get those critical hits all the time. So he's able to take out the Red Dragon, one of three enemies that gives the maximum experience of 255. And Z-Man, uh, you're, you're not going to believe this, but uh, Erdrick's armor was in its vanilla location in Hawk's Nest, uh, as were the other two searchable items. The Fairy Flute was in coal, and the Erdrick's token is the Overworld item, and it was guarded by the Golem, uh, was the Erdrick's armor. So now Luigi in the Sea Wolf's case rescuing the princess. Yes, Luigi being a hero for the first time ever. Well, why not? Mario gets Peach and well, I guess Daisy not appearing in this game, so we've got Luigi to get Gwalen.
Well, the Gwalen Positioning System, or GPS, now into play here as the dropping off of the princess into the castle, she gives our hero her love. So they can utilize that to find out how much experience it is to the next level, as well as when they're on the overworld, how far away the castle is from the player, or how far away she is from our hero, because as we all know with Gwalen, it's all about her. That's why she has so many demands and says, but thou must, and everything of that nature. It's all about her, so she lets you know where she is as compared to you, the player. And Janice gets the good news, everyone, from the wizard. I don't think that this is uh, the Wizard Farnsworth in this case. So now after taking out a Wyvern, the Seawolf continuing to head on through. I believe that's the Swamp Cave. The Wyvern seemed to be a pretty nice enemy to take out. A quick 64 experience uh, per attack, or per uh, per kill, I should say. The werewolves, oh, they're a little bit more to take out, but I believe that this will put him pretty close, if not over, to getting level 12. Yep, yep just by two. So here comes level 12 for the Seawolf. Five, two, fifteen, four, and no spells. And Janice has found Breconary. And an interesting decision as he now has about half of the gold needed for the silver shield, but opts instead to get a full plate armor, not having acquired Erdrich's sword as of yet. I think he ended up turning it down, actually. Oh, look, okay. He did think about it, but opted against it, as he still has the 7290 in gold. Okay, he's actually very close to getting the magic armor if he can manufacture 410 gold. Where's a gold man when you need him? said no one in this uh, in this particular seed ever, I'm sure. I was sincerely hoping that that enemy was a gold man. Ah yes, Blue Slimes, the great money-making machine. So Janice now into coal and is not going to like the fact that there's that fairy flute there. But we'll take it nonetheless. And opts to get rid of the dragon scale. So it looks all oh, there. Hey! <laughs> Better late gold than never, man. but there is the gold man. I mean, he can go and buy that magic armor if he wants to right now, by the time he gets back up there. Yepers. Yeah, 7,700, the amount of gold needed for the magic armor, which is the second best armor in the game. And it gives you 24 defensive points, and it also, every four steps that you take, you recover one hit on total. Worth noting that that little desert area is actually pretty sweet uh, with those wyverns and demon knights. They're really efficient enemies to be fighting right now. Even with the high evade of the demon of the demon knight. Yeah, well, for sure that can be a problem. But the demon knights, they really don't have much health. I think their max is around like 40. 
So you can two-shot them, and I mean, if worst case scenario, he dodges, you can just heal. I always thought that the Demon Knight had more, uh, had more hit points when I was a kid, but I guess maybe it was just that dark shadowing, as now the Sea Wolf has picked up the Rainbow Drop after finding the token in the overworld and is in Charlotte Castle. And runs into and takes out an Armored Knight, the AK-47. As it is known in the community. Because it hits like one. And I think it's been noted that finally... We have heard more, but I'm not sure. Maybe someone was lying. Oh, with oh, no hurt no, more. No hurt more. Man, I'm getting super debated by the chat today. Which basically means good job, chat. You're making my life as humanly difficult as possible, and I appreciate it. Oh yes, it is. Uh, as, as noted by Z-Man in chat, it is grind time and no hurt more to make things easier, at least not as of yet. Uh, it's, it will appear sometime between now and level 16, so it's just a matter of will we see it at level 13 for the Seawolf, or will we be waiting a little while longer for it? And so it's entirely possible that they may not even need it. I mean... They're going to need some pretty significant stat gains to be able to go. But, I mean, I'm just looking at that HP. And I'm like, oh man, they're close to using the Death Necklace. Maybe if they get a good strength boost and a little bit of magic, maybe they won't even get it. Hurt more, that is. Well, magic seems to be the concern. Is at level 12 only 44 MP? So that's five castings of, of Heal More once it gets down to the second end of Dragonlord. And yeah, that's uh, you're going to need a lot of hit points to be able to, to endure that. And not a lot here at level 13. Yeah, to put it in perspective, you need about 150 attack power just to be able to <laughs> win with that little magic. And I don't think they're quite there yet. I uh, got another 30 to go. I mean, now, well, now it's up to 47 MP at level 13. Still not quite good enough for another heal more, but like it just, I wouldn't say they're close per se, but it's a situation where if they get a good, really good level, all of a sudden you just, they may be good. And see, man noting in chat, they may get 150 attack power before 88 MP. So the grind is on in the Seawolf's case, and 5625 is the target number for level 14. So just a little under 1300 experience to go. Janice, meanwhile, is in the throne room. Yeah, he just got knocked out by a red dragon and could be just taking a bathroom break, who knows. There we go. Well, sure, our runners have been going at it for a little over an hour now here in our opening race of the 2018 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament. This is the first of five Swiss rounds that will be going on over the course of the next few weeks. Janice Zeal taking on the Seawolf 1. And alongside Mr. Holmes, I'm Ferran Burgundy, and we are bringing you the action here in this opening tournament match. So, I'm just noticing that your name literally contains Ron Burgundy. Is that intentional? 
Uh, yes, it is, as Ferran is my actual first name, and uh, I work in broadcasting and I've done a lot of news and media and things of that nature, so that's 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 where the, the tie-in comes from. Have you thought about legally changing your name at some point in time? <laughs> Uh, no. I, I, every, anytime I would even remotely consider it, I would think about, uh, in professional wrestling, how the Ultimate Warrior at one point legally did change his name to Warrior. Yeah, at least, at least you won't, uh, stoop to Chad Ochocinco levels. Yeah, no, no, we definitely... <laughs> Definitely don't want that. Oh my goodness, that's something that I hadn't thought about in a long time in the NFL football realm of things. Next thing we know, you'll be getting face tattoos or something. Uh, let's certainly hope not, as uh, the golem, well, trying to tattoo the sea wolf, but not able to do so, and another 255 experience, that max amount. Yeah, so he's peaking up pretty quickly on level 14. He only needs 344 more experience. So he'll be getting that within a minute or two. Depending on the enemies here, I mean, we saw a wizard a moment ago, now an armored knight. which will leave him fairly short. One more enemy after this, and now an Armored Knight on Janus' side as well. So he's exactly one Spectre short of the next level. But we're not going to see any in here. And that is where the Fairy Flute comes into play as it's going to put the golem to sleep and hopefully allow Seawolf to just keep on beating it until it's done. And I'd like to point out that one of the things that uh, newer players have a bit of trouble with is determining exactly when they can beat an enemy and when they can't. Uh, and a couple times Janus has been trying to run away from armored knights and red dragons, but hasn't been successful. When there's a chance he could beat them, although it would deplete his resources if he did so. So a very beefy power gain for the Seawolf in level 14. Oh wow. So they're at 142 attack power. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, they can beat the game. I think so. If they got down there with full resources, I think they could win. But with 64 agility, that's a tough ask. Uh, and Zarnax, there was a Metal Slime, yes, right outside of Sherlock Castle. Uh, which, if you were to try to grind and encounter those, I mean, it might be a little bit on the slower side, but I mean, with that 142 attack power, you could basically one-shot a Metal Slime and get 255 experience right there but considering how powerful he is i mean at this point as you said it's pretty close to being a done deal There we go, Janus slime or Janus making a strategy adjustment and fighting the red dragons. I hope he's successful in that. Well chat uh I guess kind of armchair quarterbacking a little bit. There are some saying go for it, some saying uh, go to level 15, some debating whether or not to utilize the death necklace, so, and 
I'm sure these are all thoughts that are going through our runners' heads as well. As Janice now getting Princess Gwalyn. A sight we're more used to seeing here. Right. Oh, I, I love this. Zarnax is pointing out that with the high strength amount that Seawolf has, they can actually start one-shotting metal slimes. And there was an area outside the castle with them. So if they had uh, a high encounter rate, then perhaps that can be a viable grind end. I thought I'd mentioned that, but perhaps maybe the push to talk had slipped out from underneath my fingers. But uh, yeah, that certainly is uh, that, that is very plausible. But I guess the question is how much of an encounter rate there is between them right outside of Charlotte Castle. Sorry if I missed that. I was probably focused on the action. Well, there's so much to pay attention to. It, it, there, there's certainly a lot of it here as now the sea wolf is going after the golem and not even bothering with the fairy flute, just smashing. Yeah, they're basically... Smashy noting in chat that uh, the... Dragonlord 2 can attack for up to 15, or 52 rather, I should say. Uh, so that may be a uh, factor as now they're at level 15. Oh yeah, you, you gotta go now. They got, they finally got the MP. And yes, with that significant MP gain, that looks to be the telltale sign of, all right, now it's time to go. Yeah, it's still a little scary with only 70 agility, but you probably can burn some heal mores on the way. Um, let's see, probably... Three or four, I reckon. Well, they're certainly hoping not to. As uh, taking a note here of the new tracker that we've got here, the uh, the orange color that you see there is a borderline for Dragonlord 2, and the green pretty much means that you're in the range that you want to be. So, or as he put it, green equals go time. So with two borderline stats of agility and MP and two that are within the range, the Seawolf looks to be in a position to go for it. Janice, meanwhile, is working on a Wolf Lord and is not too far away from level 12. And Janice looks to be right in range of acquiring the token. Janice doing a little bit of counting, and there it is, the Erdrix token. Uh, 
And Seawolf is running from all the enemies, trying to hold on to as many resources as possible, going down the different basement floors of Charlotte Castle. As all the way down in the seventh floor, the seventh basement, is where the Dragon Lord dwells. And these enemy encounters are not making it easy. Uh, oh! Right now, it's a death here. Right now, they're about a little under 40% to run from a red dragon, so you should expect it to take at least three tries, really. Well, Seawolf is going to give it another go here. And chat noting that that was a, uh, a missed input entry as he meant to go to heal more and uh, didn't, and that ended up causing the death. So Seawolf just hopping right back onto the horse and trying to ride to victory. And that's kind of... Uh, <laughs> it's not funny, but more silly. Because they just learned hurt more, correct? I believe so. I didn't pick up on which level it exactly was that it was acquired. Um, and muscle memory is a really funny thing because hurt more was gained so late. The entire game, you've just been doing the menu wrap around to get to heal more. And sometimes you just go through muscle memory and do it again, but all of a sudden there's hurt more there. So yes, uh, chat confirming, pretty sure that Hurtmore was at level 15, which was just acquired not too long ago, maybe about five minutes ago. So given the low agility and defense of the players, the questions being brought up in chat as to whether or not to grind up to the Silver Shield, uh, but with, with that extra MP gain at level 15, it is questionable. But according to, uh, according to Mr. Holmes throwing it out there in chat that not necessarily worth it to try to grind up to level or to grind up to that gold grind and get that 14,000 plus gold for the additional 10 defense points. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. That's just my gut reaction of the whole thing. Um, because you figure even if it's pretty bad enemies, you should be able to get down there well, using three heal mores. But the more I see the Sea Wolf try to go through, and the more armored knights and red dragons I see, I'm starting to reconsider that. And now. So it's going to be quite interesting. I mean, you see the clear experience gap between the two runners here, but if Janice can find a good grind spot, he can get most of that experience back in about 10 to 15 minutes. So if Seawolf has some failed dives here, uh, this gap could be overcome. Well, as the sea wolf now making his way through and is on the other side of the swamp cave, stopping over into Hawk's Nest. So maybe he is going to grind up to 16. Yeah, I can understand that from his perspective. 
really, it's only, I think, uh, six golems to get to the next level. So you can knock that out in about three, four minutes, rather than maybe just wasting a dive, so to say. But it's also possible that the level may end up being nothing. It's, it's a risk. It is, and now there's a Metal Slime on Janice's side. So he gets the one hit point, and another... Oh, but he runs away before the third. Kicking out at two is the Metal Slime. So it's going to be interesting, uh, as Zarnax was pointing out, like, there is... I believe the, uh, the point, uh, as far as the attack range, once uh, once they get to that certain point to be able to one-shot the Metal Slimes, Janice, not quite there yet. He is acquiring the Rainbow Drop, so he can at least get into Sherlock Castle. Mr. Holmes providing the numbers that uh, at 70 agility, it's approximately a 40% chance to run away from enemies like the Armored Knights and Red Dragons. And Janus is now in Hawk's Nest as well. And is going to Heal up and take on the golem. So the fairy flute being blown on Janice's side. The sea wolf just continuing to wreck on some golems. I feel like I'm seeing double here. Four golems. And there is Erdrick's armor. However, the difference, uh, it's, goodness, about a, about a little less than a 40 minute differential from when the Seawolf acquired Erdrick's armor to when Janus did. Yeah, if I were to estimate the gap between the two runners right now, I'd say it's around the 15 minute mark for Janus to actually catch up and experience. Oh, and another 22 hit points, my goodness. And probably equally as important is seven more agility. So now they're probably close to 45% to run from Armor Knights and Red Dragons. And as you saw, the agility stat turning to green, so... The odds of the Sea Wolf taking care of Dragon Lord looking that much better, but the challenge, as it has been thus far, is getting down to there. Yeah, I'm kind of split on what I would do when I run into these armored knights. It's almost a point where you might just want to fight and tank through them. And you lose a little bit of health, but you have plenty of magic to spare. And you can see the difference, 44 MP at level 12 for Janus versus 90 MP for the Seawolf at level 16. Yeah, really, 
The only thing I can see going wrong for Seawolf here is he accidentally hurt Moors when he doesn't mean to. Yeah, and we see Seawolf has uh, adjusted his strategy to tank through the Red Dragons. And up to level 13 goes Janus. Keep in mind that level 15 is very winnable. So really, uh, Janus only needs to get to that 7,500 experience mark, which is about seven minutes. Which, yeah, a few, uh, a few rounds of that and a couple of missed dives for the Seawolf here, and that can turn things around, despite what looks to be a rather significant differential of roughly 6,000 experience. But yeah, just to give an idea of how I make up these numbers, these minute differentials, uh, basically when you're in grind mode like this, it's very common to be making about 500 experience a minute. In this case, it would be killing two golems in a minute. So I'm like, okay, he needs 3,000 experience, that's about 6-7 minutes. And here is the Seawolf on the 7th basement. Of Charlotte Castle now dealing with a blue dragon. Not getting too terribly many encounters. This is only going to be beneficial for him. Yeah, and I really like his decision making that he's made. He's adapted his strategy. He's realizing that he has plenty of extra resources. And just tanking through those red dragons and arbor knights has made this dive a lot smoother. So now we've got the spike tile with another golem as the mini boss. And really, using the fairy flute is probably a bit uh, defensive here, but I definitely don't blame him with the way things have gone. And don't forget that uh, this is the first of many, many races coming your way here in the tournament. In fact, in this first round alone, this is the first of 21 matches. And it looks like six of them are set for tomorrow evening. So the Randomania Networks will be abundant with Dragon Warrior Randomizer tournament action. Definitely stay tuned as it all gets sorted out. And you'll find out tomorrow evening how that'll shake out and which races will be where among the Randomania networks. As the Seawolf is putting on the Death Necklace, so that's going to take away 25% of his max hit points, but it's going to give him an additional 10 strength. And as he is declared a fool, I hope you are all ready to see the Dragon Lord get absolutely smoked. And there is the first form, so now we go to the second form of Dragon Lord. No back attack to get things started, and uh, 14 to get things rolling. A nice low attack, and, well, not quite low enough. He's going to use a precautionary heal more. Yes, a nice, very slow menu to make sure he hit heal more. He's very aware of what has happened earlier. Very methodical choices here, as... There's that attack for 49. We've got another 14. 
Yeah, that's that's really unfortunate because 13 is actually his minimum. He's doing 13 to 27 here. And it has been low to middle rolls thus far as the fourth attack gets him up to 65. Now another, oh, there's a 21-er, so that's going to get up to 86, the first uh, high 20, uh, yeah, above 20 roll there. And there's another 19, so now we're seeing things a little bit more reasonable. Ooh, and there's that one shot of a metal slime that we were talking about earlier on Janice's side. And another 21 to get it up to 126. Here's another 15. So that's 141. So the next attack could be the last here, as it's anywhere from 150 to 165. And 27, just a max roll just to end it for certain. And the Seawolf is going to be victorious here in our first matchup in the 2018 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament. And also avenging a head-to-head -head loss against Janice from the Chaos Tournament earlier this year. So get out your GGs in chat if you haven't already, as the Seawolf is victorious. And it's going to go to 1-0 here in the Swiss-style rounds. With an official SRL time of 1 hour, 31 minutes, and 50 seconds. With the sick flame animation, if I don't say so myself. Yes, that was unexpected, but agreeably sick. So, okay, 131. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this race ends up being separated by less than 10 minutes. Because I think Janice is going to get the next level in probably three minutes, and then he's going to be gone. And noting in chat here, and we'll give the uh, appropriate credit for it, a uh, combination of Captain Uhu and the tie-dye guy responsible for the new layout here. So make sure to show them some love as they've done a lot of the... They're, they're, they, they're some of the... Uh, even though I'm giving them some of the praises now, they're generally the unsung heroes when it comes to graphical design and things of that nature. And it looks like we have our victor, none other than the fast running and fast talking, the Seawolf one. Congratulations and GG on this opening round matchup victory. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a oddball seed. Very uh very one way. Put it that way. Very one way. Oh, as in the as in you have to pretty much start everything by going east. Yeah, go east, go north, go to the cave. Otherwise do nothing. Yeah, it seemed like the opening continent was a bit on the small side. It was small, and I explored all of, I went to that way first time, saw the cave, so I'll try it later on, accidentally killed me, went left, saw uh, Remoldar pretty close by, so I was punching ghosts trying to find enough money for a key, that being killed by a scorpion or a magician. And uh, once I had the key, I got the sword out of the chest from the uh, treasury, I went downstairs, saw Garen's grave, got the first three freebies, couldn't go down all the way. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, you know, I was hoping for goodies in the first, uh, Urgus Cave was right there and had a torch. Uh, went north, nothing, went west, nothing. And, uh, yeah, once we went to that cave and popped out of the back of Garenham, I was like, okay, well, there's four towns over there, uh, the jerk's right there, there's Charlock, uh, have fun. So, I'm curious how infuriating it was to be able to do a gold grind, but not really being able to buy anything right away. Um, it would have been more annoying if I didn't find a sword in the first uh, treasury, and I didn't find ar the armor pretty much, you know, pretty quick actually. It was a pretty fast find. So, um, yeah, I could never grind for any weapons, but I had the best sword in the game in the first 20 minutes, and I had the best armor in the game in the first half hour. <laughs> so, okay, I guess I can't buy my silver shield. I'll make do. Yeah, that definitely helps. And, uh, who did we have? Hurt more was level 15 only, so it was all raw power. So if you went uh, if you went agility HP or agility magic, you might have had some trouble. Um, yeah, but all you had basically was the sword. Uh, I don't think the hurt came up until like level nine or ten. Yeah, it was interesting for sure. Uh, I'm 
curious if you can talk me through your decisions of when to go fight. Because your first real serious attempt was level 15, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, Martin Naren, killed right myself. I have 140 hit points. I have dead necklace. I have strength the wazoo. It'll be fine. And then I look at my 70 agility and couldn't fight or couldn't get away from anything. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm curious if your accidental hurt more has had anything to do with that decision or if that was just like the tipping point. Oh, that didn't help. But uh, no, it was definitely, uh, I had to hurt more all game. I'm like, okay, just hit up and heal, up and heal. Good to go. Then he's, there's like, I think of three deaths. I have one, one death there, one death in the overworld, and one death in the golden grind. We're just like, oh, hit up and heal. Oh, hurt more. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been there many times before. Um, what I can say, though, is I definitely noticed and appreciated your very methodical menuing during your Dragonlord fight. Yeah, it's, well, once you curse yourself like that, you have it in the bag, you know, you're basically ready to go. Like, the only thing that will kill you is you pressing up once instead of twice. So it definitely pays, it pays dividends to just take your time with it, and the fight is basically scripted. If you're not... If you're not hoping for high rolls, you're not hoping for doubles, it's basically a scripted fight, as long as you don't press the wrong button. Precisely. Uh, I did notice one thing that benefited you on your level 16 dive was your decision to start tanking through the Red Dragons and Armored Knights. I'm not yeah. sure if that would have worked super well at level 15, but it would have been close. That was a really great decision. Yeah, once I I went for that grind 215 and the dragon got in the way and I punched him in three hits, I'm like, oh, I think I've been killed by a dragon in three hits. Like, screw it. I'll just, you know, rather than take five hits and run away and use a heal more, I'll just take three hits and kill the guy. <laughs> Forget it. I'm going to get hit regardless, so just take him down. It's uh, from basically a fault. Like, I think five of them on the way down and they were all three hit kills. So basically their HP was so soft at that point. My, well, actually, my strength was so obnoxious. It didn't matter at that point. So, one thing that was noted by a couple people, uh, or when did you get 100 strength? Was that level 14 or 15? Um, I forget. No, I had more at... Let's see, strength was... I'm trying to think. The sword's 40. It was probably 14. Because I noticed okay. I was really punching golems for like, you know... <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll fight the golem, see how it goes. I think I did like 51, 48, and 52 for like my first like combat with the golem. And they started rolling lower again, but obviously the hot rolls were... When they were hot, they were hot. Yeah. One of the interesting strategy decisions that a couple people were pointing out in chat is at that point you can one-shot kill Metal Slimes. So I was wondering if that ever crossed your mind, because there were a couple areas around the castle where you could find Yeah, them. I only saw one. I saw right in the right in the bridge to Charlock. I ran to a, a slime once, and it ran away real fast, so... At that point, I was only level 13, I think. I only did one damage to it. Um, but I never saw a slime beyond that point, so I didn't know where they were at, so I can't hunt what I can't find. So I figured golem's right there, dragon's right there, screw it, just kill those things. Yeah, given that information, I think that's a very reasonable decision. Also, it helped that the golem was vanilla. It was just simply punching the face golem. It wasn't sleep golem, wasn't dragon breath golem, it wasn't hurt more golem. It was just punch, punch, punch. So, you no, know, open the fight, flute once, and if he stays asleep, great. If not, you know, just trade shots back and forth. So the fact that he was so... And dragons too, actually. Dragons, Axe Knights, uh, all the big bad enemies were all vanilla. They were just punching him in the face. They were all just super generic. So uh, Sleep, I think, was on. Stoneman had Sleep. I think the Druin had Sleep. That was really yeah, bad as well as well. Dragonlord Breath. Yeah, that was a problem. But uh, yeah, on that one Druin that like, murdered me in the first like 10 minutes, I didn't see any more. So <laughs> no, no problem I, with that. I think you'll be... Pleased to know that Janice at level 15 just tried to hurt more golem, so it's everyone makes that mistake at least at some point in time. It's so infuriating it. too. Well, it depends if you have the spell. Like if I had hurt more the whole game, I would know it was there. I'd be I'd be actively you know hurting things that healing myself, no vice versa, because I'd be used to just think up once and blowing things out of the water. So yep. it's when you get the spell, like you get the whole game, get used to it, you play an hour and a half for that, and suddenly oh by the way, uh, one more thing in the way. It looks like Janice is also going to try and go for level 16. We'll see if he decides to stop at that point or not. I suspect he will. Does Janice go uh, strength HP or did he go to build than I did? No, nope, strength HP. You haven't raised too much vanilla chaos. Obviously, it was crazy, so chaos as anything goes. Um, but for vanilla build, has a. I know last year there was a big chart of like who raced with what and you know, the overall effects that they were. 
Um, the Shrink HP is still kind of considered the premier build, or has that been outweighed by something else? I would still say I, I don't feel like I have the authority to declare one build better than the other because I just don't have enough information, but I would say the majority of people still use Strength HP. It may be closer to a 50-50 split among the top 10 or 20 runners or so, but... Yeah, I was curious, because this seed was definitely HP loaded, so I could have gone probably not HP build and been okay. Um, I had enough for Death Necklace easy. I think I had 150 and went down to 134 for Death Necklace. So, yeah, it was basically a free Death Necklace. It's like, here, have 10 and a half hour, go down. There was no risk at all. Pretty much. It's very satisfying to hit DL1 for 58. I think that's what your final attack was. Yeah, but I rolled low so many times. I rolled, I think, 34, 35, and 58. I could have saved himself or hurt more. Well, thankfully you had plenty of magic to spare, so it didn't really matter. That was a slow build. If you had a magic build, you probably got screwed, because even if you had the accelerated MP build, you got so little until level 14, 15, 16, it didn't matter. I think I had 32 or 33 at a level 5th or 14, magic-wise. I think it was around 40. It was pretty I'm low. Not positive, yeah. I was thinking to myself, like, level 10, like, yeah, I'm getting swole, I got HP, I got strength, this would be great. I have 20 MP. I'm never going to be able to get Charlock. <laughs> Thanks. No, never be a team model. Thankfully, it wasn't a long, drawn-out affair. The magic points came in reasonably short order. So, that's always frustrating when you have everything. It's like, oh, I only have four heal mores. Poop. I didn't feel like that. I think... I just mean Jackmas a year ago. That was kind of that thing where it was a brutal scene in the first place, and then MP was just not happening. And I think one level we got like 40 MP, and just like, no, okay, never mind, we're going. So, but uh, the game does that to you. Uh, it's definitely more balanced than it used to be, but uh, it can backload or front load depending. Yeah, and that's that's kind of one of the fun parts, seeing those ridiculous situations and being able to adapt to them. That's why it's called a randomizer. Although, although uh, people need to have words with McGrew because all of the searchable items were in their vanilla spots, which prompted cries of not random enough. Actually, you mentioned that. Yeah, uh, tokens on the map. Yeah, the flute was in coal and the, uh, yeah. Trolloc, or not Trolloc, uh, Hawksness had the armor. Hmm. What are the odds? If only there were a green dragon guarding Gwalin. True, true. And an Axe Knight in the uh, Hawk's Nest. So you get, you get a little variety there. Right. Uh, and let's see. I see Janice is grinding at the uh, Trolloc on the first floor. Right. There we go. Yeah, he just got level 16 and he's popping back out into Garenham, probably for acquiring resources for his final descent. There we go. His levels. Let's see. Yep, some more stats. Though I had more, I had more attack powers than necklace. That's right. Okay, I see AP and the agility on map. I was wrong. But yeah, he's got the same stats as I do. Uh, the same build. Um, yeah, basically it was a very vanilla Charlock. Um, Red dragons on the top few floors is a pain. But they seem to slow down. I think there's one on the bottom floor. I guess they maybe they lowered down the counter rate a bit. But um, yeah, what you don't want to see on the top few floors. There's two zones in Charlock, if I recall correctly, and you don't want to see on the top floor, you don't want to see the Axe Knights and the uh, Red Dragons, because they're just, they swarm you over and over again. There's actually three zones in Charlock. There's the main floor and first basement is the one zone, and that's the longest walk, so it really sucked that there were Armored Knights aplenty. The B2, B3, B4 is zone 2, and then B5, B6, B7 is zone 3. There you go. But um, yeah, again, the early walk is a pain because it's really long and windy, and you don't think it's that bad, but B4, B5 are like, you know, like, one's like 20 steps, one's like 30 steps. The one right before, <laughs> like, B5 itself is like literally 10 going to the right. It's very short. Um, the long walks are obviously the trailer's basement proper and uh, the first few floors. Yeah, so I think you've said a lot about how your run went. Do you have any other general comments on how you're feeling through the race? Do you feel like you're ready to go and wreck this tournament? 
Oh, a wrecking. Uh, <laughs> again, a randomizer can throw its skills one thing. Uh, a lot of players play a lot more than I do. Um, having a skill is great for randomizer. Having a skill lets you see a situation and deal with it. Lets you go into it and know it's coming. Um, but luck is definitely a thing. If you cannot find uh, an item and you've left that one chest, like I left that one chest at the very bottom of Garen's grave. If that had an important item, I'd have been screwed. I purposely made a choice to leave that there because there's one chest versus all the chests in the world. I don't want to risk diving over and over again to find nothing. Um, if it was something, I was probably boned. So again, randomizer can throw a wrench in it. So luck's important, skill's important. And uh, if you ever weigh one or the other, you're kind of hosing yourself. So just to give a brief update on Janazeel, he's just entered B2. He actually had a pretty long walk on B1, which is always good to see, especially when the zone is nasty. So he should be... Um, like cause Once you get cleared from the second zone and get to the bottom floors, the enemies were quite harmless, if I recall. Yeah, a lot of blue dragons, uh, green dragons, uh, stone men, which, which had sleep you could run from. Actually, no, stone men weren't there. It was uh, wizards were there, which were dodgy. They were definitely fast to get in your way, but they didn't actually have any problems getting past them. And I, I feel obliged to point out, literally when you said wizards were dodgy, a wizard dodged Janus. It happens. So that was pretty cool. I did have a werewolf dodge a critical, which is fun. The old, like, 1 in 200 sort of deal. I mean, the odds are there. I've Actually, that was last uh, was cash tournament. I actually found the noodle. It was the golem, and I crit it, and he dodged, and he punched me in the face to kill me. <laughs> so the dodge can happen. Oh, uh, man. I feel like I need to get a uh, rage troll image on my stream to describe that scenario. Um, because that, that would be infuriating. That was the race with me and Z, so he, he killed the he killed the noodle in the first like 10 minutes and I just spent like a half hour trying to kill anything. And then we both, it didn't matter we killed stuff, we both caught up pretty well and then we found that one wraith. And that wraith was basically max HP, max agility, dealer breath, sleep, immune spells, and gave like 20 experience points and 30 gold. <laughs> and it was guarding, I think I think it was the, guard, the guardian of uh, Dragon Lord. So that was obnoxious. That wraith was a thing. So, question. Was that wraith actually more difficult to beat than the Dragon Lord? Definitely. No, the Dragon Lord went down like four rounds of combat. It was it was childish play. We were so strong, and that Wraith didn't care. Like, the Dragon Lord was so easy <laughs> compared to that Wraith. Oh, man. That's how Chaos works, though. Even the first time, I was like, ooh, Chaos, let's see if we got the talents. I'm like, oh, right, yeah, it's actually Vidala. So, obviously, he's going to be a half plate. It's going to be an axe. It's going to be. So, it takes. It's good, but there are some races where you didn't see anything. Like, you went to five towns and saw clothes and sticks. So, it's good to have, you know. I know what's where now. It's always fun. So Janice is just making the nine o'clock turn in the final basement. All right, going around. Yeah, basically again, Star Weavers, Wizards, uh, Blue Dragons, pretty tame. The uh, Guardians of Golem. So uh, Janice has been using the flute to buy that first round and run away. Um, and again, actually, with the uh, with the Golems, when you're this strong, it's worth fluting the first time and just you know, if you get three or four free swings, cool. If not, whatever, just go back and forth. So it's not worth fluting every time he wakes up, but definitely worth getting how many free shots can I get? You know, roll the dice, see what happens. So worth noting that Janus is fighting his way through these enemies, and he's about a thousand short of the next level. As he's just walked about 40 steps without an encounter, so that's pleasant. And he's that's now on the mini boss. That's a good heal. Yeah, every time you walk, the big thing about Dragon Lord Castle, if you walk and get lucky with those steps, you're basically saving yourself a heal more, which is real great. Yeah, no kidding. It's so much variance with that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it claims to be the same amount per step per giant dungeon tile. I have I have issues with that thought. <laughs> but there was the it wasn't there it was so bad. It was bad in a Hawk's Nest that last time I we were grinding. Those five in a row, literally five in a row Maggie weapons. Have you uh heard of the Mr. Holmes encounter eight TM? Um, because that kind of describes it. I'm not sure about the Holmes encounter rate. I've seen I've seen error. No. <laughs> error totally lose it when you just run into like literally eight red dragons on the first floor in a row. Which does happen to him more often than it should. Yeah, Mr. Holmes encounter eight is running into a crap load of enemies when you're trying to win the game, and then when you're actually trying to grind like nothing. Just nothing. He's pondering the necklace. You can do it. You can do it. Yep. 
Always yeah. good to hit the Dragon Lord for ridiculous damage. Let's see if it rolls better than I did. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's just morally required. Also very important. Press B. And he gets Wayne Gretzky damage in two attacks with a 45 and a 54. Um, so else. this should be easy peasy. You might get a double in the first round if he swings low. Yeah, small shield though. That might be an issue. Just because his punching might be might surprise him. I was still taking 48 with punches with my large shield. He might get surprised if he, if he rolls the dice too closely. Yeah, I think he, he popped you for a 49 once, actually. Yeah, um, so it's definitely potent. Yeah, as long as he doesn't attack on 50 or 51, it should be fine. But he's powering through it like a champ. He's getting great rolls, too. Like, his rolls are <laughs> far superior to my rolls. So that's good. Yeah, like, actually, the average roll is like 20, which is kind of hilarious. Just highlights how low rolls you were getting. My low carb diet. No rolls. Fair enough. Well, makes sense considering how beefy you were for most of the seed, so it, it fits all right in with that. Oh, yeah. Excellent segue, Furon. I tried. Didn't know exactly where to sneak in here. I thought, alright, I did a <laughs> little more on the talking on the play-by-play, -play, so I'm like, oh, let, me, let me let home shine here on this here. Right? And, and give me a chance to shut up for a change. Alright, I will, I will lament those first two seeds that we had that before all the shenanigans happened. The first seed was two keys and a return. I was like, yes, freebie. And then the second seed was two keys. Like, oh, sweet, we still got it. And then third key was like, fairy water and a herb. <laughs> Well, it's good we figured out that bug. Uh, I mean, it was nothing about Janna Zeal's fault. Uh, people were making comments that it, it was speed hacks on his because the mage has fast. So that was that was pretty cool. If you watch 8 bit Theater, Black Mage not one for following the rules. I'm not shocked that he would sneak his way to save a few frames every time you press the button. Uh, nonetheless, he has finished, so get out your GGs and chat for Janice, who is going to finish in second with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 52 minutes, and 41 seconds. Nice work. All right. Get to listen to that sick credit music. Looks like we're just checking to see if he wants to hop in for an interview as well. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Come on down. In the interim, I uh, want to give, uh, as there was a bit of behind the scenes question at the beginning of it, but uh, I want to give credit here to Doo Doo Dude, who has been handling the tracking for this evening. Uh, yeah, there was some perplexion in the beginning as to who was going to take care of that, and we got things rolling before I was able to find out. So my apologies to the Doo Dude for uh, not giving proper credit earlier in the seed here. Doo Doo Dude always does good work. So as we wait on that... Uh, don't forget, make sure that you stick around here on Randomania 2. As coming up in about 15 minutes here is the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Weekly Race. Going to be sticking right here through the, uh, just about through the duration for that. Maybe take a few minutes of pause for uh, switching things over. And then we have a, uh, looks like a six pack of races tomorrow here among the Randomania networks part of the Dragon Warrior Randomizer 2018 tournament. So more on that coming up in a little bit. So it looks like Janice has to run off. This was a bit of a long one today. Uh, but yeah, lots of races tomorrow. I thought both racers did an excellent job of really slugging through that tough beginning. Uh, I guess... What I'll say is, Seawolf, do you have any other comments to offer? Just saying it's the first race of many. we got a whole ton coming up, so if you want to see more of this, 
Just keep your eyes peeled. Watch Discord. Watch Twitter. It'll be all over the place. Great stuff. Well, best of luck in the rounds to follow. Great job today. Way to get it done. Thank you, thank you. And it looks like uh, as far as, every, unless there was something that was updated in the last minute or so here, it looks like we do have, in fact, a six-pack of Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament races tomorrow, starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. It's going to be Eternal Newbie against Reusation. And then one hour later, it looks like we're going to be featuring a quad as two races will be going on at the same time. It's going to be Centroid 41 against It's Too Early. And then Amazing Toaster against Azriel Ravenheart. Then, just one hour after that, at 10 p.m. Eastern, it's going to be Captain Green 7 against Tristel. Just 15 minutes after that, you've got Angry Larry against Retro Omega X. And the nightcap at 11 p.m. Eastern, you've got Ouija Wee against Will Wagner Music. The different networks to be determined as there's a lot of shuffling that's going to be going on among the Randomania networks with the six races crammed into a roughly five hour span. Well, suffice to say, if you miss the start of one, there'll be two more behind it. So you'll always get a full race you want to. You can get two screens and watch them all. You have, you have, wow, I was thinking you have like 10 going at once if you have multi-twitch. That'd be kind of funny. Anyway, um, any final comments, Furon? I think that's just going about just about going to do things here. As uh, this is the first of what we presume to be over 100 Swiss-style races coming up over the next month and change, and then that will lead to the play-ins and, of course, the single elimination tournament bracket that will be making their way. So quite a bit going on in terms of Dragon Warrior Randomizer over the course of the next couple of months. And I'm looking forward to being as much of a part of it as I can here, bringing the action to you among the Randomania networks. Uh, so we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, for everybody behind the scenes, make sure to give them a follow. Wolfman2000 on the restream. Doo Dude on the tracking. And, of course, my broadcast partner, Mr. Holmes, along with myself, I'm Faram Burgundy. Don't forget also to give the runners a follow here, Janice, Zeal, and Seawolf1. They are both fantastic as well. Until next time, may your moves be excellent and your seeds stay classy. Stay tuned. We're about 10 minutes away from Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprises Weekly Race right here on Randomania 2. Good night, everyone.